Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the EUS Challenger series number 12. Sorry we had a little bit of a wait there, but we are now into the lobby, into the champion select, and we have got Reason Gaming versus Quasson Crusaders. I am Spuddington and I'm going to be joined now by Metas. Hey Spud, hey viewers, how is it going? Pleasure to be here. Unfortunately, Pulse had to scatter after that first best of three, so I'm going to be filling in for him for this game. Reason Gaming up against Quasson Crusaders, as you said. Important to mention or right from the get-go here, Spud, that unfortunately for Quasson Crusaders, they are going to be missing their jungle of Broken Shard for this game. He had prior commitments and will not be able to be joining into this matchup, so he is being replaced. Yeah, which could be a real problem for their team. We saw when he, when uh, Quasson Crusaders were playing through their first round games, he was a big influence on the map, playing both Elise and Lee Sin, the classic snowboy early ganking junglers, and played them to such great effect. Snowballing, ganking, and getting that game well into their grip. So we'll see if they're able to cope with that. But uh, Reason Gaming are actually... Um, Oh, we should probably also mention the, the, the small amount of drama. Metas, are you aware yes. of what happened with Reason Gaming? I am half aware, so if I miss out any of the details, please do jump in. Reason Gaming, I was actually casting on them um, yesterday when they got knocked out. So they got knocked out by a team called Asian Maids. It turned out that Asian Maids had a substitute called Incarnation, who has been banned from Riot, like lifetime ban, that kind of situation. So we found out about this after the game concluded, and therefore Asian Maids were disqualified with Reason Gaming being given the go-ahead, the buy into this round. At first, I believe, Spud, from what I heard, they didn't want to take it. They felt they played too bad and didn't deserve the second chance, but we had to put them through anyway because that's just kind of how the rules are. Yeah, so they were very gentlemanly about it, and Reason Gaming are actually a lovely bunch of guys. Uh, met them at Insomnia 49. And indeed, I think they were second place finishers in that particular land. So they're a, they're a bunch of nice guys and they're a really solid team as well. They did, however, relatively recently have to swap out their jungler. Uh, Ku moved off to join Asian Maids, in fact. And they have had it replaced by Agent, who still wears the Eternity tag, uh, even though even though he is not. But he is, he is their jungler. He is not a sub or anything else. Yes, very much the case. It does get a bit confusing for us casters and I'm sure the viewers as well. But just to rectify again, blue team is going to be Reason Gaming and the purple team will be Quasson Crusaders as they are coming through with the picks. So, Aatrox again, Spuddington. It's an interesting one. Over the last few weeks has really started to get much more love in the top end of the scene. We saw it yesterday being played to great effect from Ko. Today it was played in previous games, I believe you and Pulse were casting on as well. So what are your thoughts? Why is he suddenly getting such a huge jump up in popularity? Well, people are basically working out how to abuse the fact he has a Guardian Angel for free on a three minute cooldown. It's really, that's an incredible amount of power in his kit, and that gives him great strength at diving towers, which in the competitive scene is much more valuable as a laner than you might expect if you experience in solo queue. Because what you experience when you play a champion, a new champion in solo queue, is you go in, you're playing Artrox, you're like, okay, he's got some decent sustain, he's all right in a sustained fight, and, and then I got killed, and you know, my Guardian Angel does very little for me, I just get revived and then he kills me again. What happens in competitive though is you're much, much more likely to see junglers rotating up, going for 2v1 dives, going for that aggression, and it gives you much more potential in those situations. He can really, really go ham because he's just aware that he will die and then the tower will switch aggro and he can just walk out for free. Absolutely, and interestingly enough as well, speaking of Reason Gaming and Asian Maids playing yesterday, Asian Maids ran this comp as well, they ran the Thrash Zack combo, very, very uh, scary combination, it's a lot of CC, it's a lot of AoE, and just scary to play off against, especially when you have a potential Varus pick being locked in, it's going to lock everybody down for him, just stand at the back and crush faces, so we are going to have the Varus and Cassidan picks up as well, so Already, that's a pretty scary lineup right here from Class on Crusaders. Yeah, and that's also kind of showing their hand a little bit more than you might expect there. If you pick up Zack in this situation, 
you're pretty much saying it's got to be a jungle Zac, because if you put top lane Zac against top lane Arthrox, that's really not going to work out very well for you because of his sustain and his greater dueling potential in a sustained fight. He basically does what Zac does better in terms of a straight one-on-one -on -one in that laning phase, which means he ends up building up a big old CS advantage. And I think we saw that uh, against Reason Gaming in their first round against Asian Maids, I do believe, as I recall. But uh, what are the next two picks I am casting from the stream metas? Yes, so obviously you're a tiny bit behind. Uh, they are hovering over, they're kind of flirting with the idea of Shivana and also Vi. So with zero seconds to go, it is going to be a Vi and Nardius locks in the vein the last possible second so vein vi ari sona and aatrox are going to be played from reason gaming switching over the 10th and final pick up here for class on crusaders and they are hovering over the potential irelia pick but they just pretty much skirting through a bunch of champions so best to leave it for a little while yet yeah, they'll, they'll, they they like to toy with us, and sometimes that's kind of helpful for teams to actually just flick through champions, because you kind of, you see the picture and it like, okay, psychology term, it primes in your mind, like, what that champion is good at, because it makes you think, okay, right, Vi, good at this X, Y, Z. It's actually, you know, a useful thing to do sometimes, although I think he's actually just randoming. But uh, that Vi pickup, second time we've seen him t her today, and uh, Meta's... What are your thoughts on that? My thoughts on Vi is that from a spectatorial viewpoint, it, it kind of gets my mouth watering. It, it's kind of, if I go back to season two, the declaration of intent, whenever you saw a Nautilus or a Maokai pick up in the jungle was lots of ganks. And that to me is the feeling that I get when you get, you know, Vi in the lineup, when you have that potential huge aggressive jungler in, I know Pulse absolutely loves it a bit because the way he plays, he's very aggressive, he wants to make kills for his team. So again, seeing Agent potentially taking this for his for his squad here is, is pretty awesome. You know, I'm, I can't wait to see how he's going to utilize it from the jungle, but you got to say that looking at the other team, it's going to be fairly difficult to gank any of these lanes, because cassadin has got his Rift Walk at 6, Zac is just basically going to have Omnipresence across the map, and Varus and Thresh, once they hit 6 as well, are pretty much impossible to lock down. Worth noting though, once Cassidy has hit level 6, if Agent is smart about it, he can actually follow through the Riftwalk by using his ultimate. Riftwalk has an animation, and I don't believe that the Vi ultimate does. So if he latches on with that cable, pulls himself in as Cassidy in Riftwalks, it requires very split-second timing, but these were really good players, and it might be possible for him to actually set up that gank even if that happens, because he's got a good follow-up who can chase down Cassidy as well in the form of Ari. So we'll see if that happens after level 6, but regardless, we are now into the delay timer, so uh, we will just jump into a quick break, and we'll see you after this.
Hello ladies and gents, welcome back to Chaos TV's live coverage at the EOS Challenger series with yours truly, Mattis. I am joined by Spuddington, and we are casting the first out of a potential three between Reason Gaming and Croissant Crusaders. Just a bit of housekeeping duties here, unfortunately they have not turned on spectators mode, therefore Spuddington is going to be colour casting from the stream. This means I'm probably going to have to interrupt them at some points because there is a delay on the stream if a team fight kicks off. I'm sure you guys would rather we jumped in on the action. Regardless though, seems that all 10 players are just happy to hang around this mid area, Spud. Feel bad for you, dude, having to cast off the stream though. It's annoying, but it happens quite often. Uh, we, we should probably make a rule or something. But regardless, it, it's just... The reason it happens is just that the teams oh. are used to scrimming. Well, speaking of delays and jumping on top of you, that's exactly what is going to happen here from Zack, and they've actually gone in for the first blood. First blood will be taken from Sona, Spontex flashing through the wall onto Drake to make sure he doesn't get caught out of position here. And could very well be doing so. Charm lands from Bimbo, they're going to be following this one up. Do they have enough damage? Dark Flight in from Aatrox, that will be the ignite. And the second kill picked up. Apologies for jumping in there, Spud, but we did mention it a few seconds ago. Yeah, there's there's no way around it. You're just going to have to do it. But like I, like I say, the teams kind of are used to scrimming and they don't like people spectating their scrims because they might find their super secret they're going to run Vi strats. But then they carry on doing that when they make the lobbies for the tournament games, which is a little bit awkward. But uh, that's just how it is sometimes. And that fight definitely going in the favor of Reason Gaming, picking up a lot of gold. And Hefty Schlumpf going to have to start off his jungle there with quite a chunk of health missing. Yeah, absolutely. But fortunately for him, for, Zach, for him, Zach is pretty sustainable, so he should be okay throughout the jungle. He'll be picking up Fat Blue and getting himself to level 2 as well. First Blood, I guess one of the only slight respites, bit of... I guess the, the silver lining of the cloud there for Quasson Crusade is that Sona picked up the first blood, so maybe a bit more dangerous if the likes of an Aatrox got it, or if maybe a Bimbo 8's Ari did. But we do have a double lane switch up coming here, Spud, with both duo lanes actually occupying mid. Interesting, what are your thoughts on this? To me it smacks of uh, one. both teams kind of thinking... Like, so, okay, right, Reason Gaming are in a situation where Brush actually makes their 2v2 much more difficult against the uh, Thresh Varus lane, because they have to be careful about the death sentence hooks. Plus, Reason Gaming have good, comparatively, uh, for, for laners that are not normally in that situation, they have good characters for these uh, longer lanes, by comparison. So they put them their bottom lane in that mid, and they let Quasim Crusaders know that was going to happen, essentially. Or at least they left it so the Quasim Crusaders could guess. And are just going to accept the fact that it's going to be a difficult lane for their 2v2. Even though that will, uh, you know, mean... But it will give them some advantages in the other lanes. Yeah, and, and just kind of going forward, I'm keeping an eye on mid because there's been a lot of action to and throwing between the two uh, supports. Obviously Thrash throwing out the death sentences and Kazmich pretty much just spamming with the Hymn of Valor, the Q. But uh, who is this going to favour going into those Drake fights? Because with both duo lanes being in the mid, do you think it favours either of these two? It's really going to depend what the kind of lane setups are, like how these lanes go, essentially. Because Nardius is not going to be a huge factor when dragon fights, you know, start to happen most of the time. He's, you know, still going to be a vein at level 6, so he'll have decent damage, but he won't be starting to scale into insanity. Comparatively, Varus is going to be incredibly powerful in a dragon fight because he's one of those rare AD carries with a big CC ultimate ability. And that is so valuable in that area. Plus, they'll have the Thresh hooks to, you know, catch people out, which is also very, very valuable in those dragon situations. But they are still going to have that Sona around the place, and Spontex is going to be very good at roaming. Yeah, unfortunately, he did just get taken out there, courtesy of get a gank coming in from Agent uh, Vi, uh, Vi, I should say, and that uh, they do actually pick up that kill. Flash, of course, was burnt previously in that level 1 skirmish, so there was no way out for Cassidy. Very smart for Agent here to go down and occupy the bot lane. So it's going to make it harder for Cassidy now to spiral out of control. Going to be very passive up until level 6 when Rift Walk comes up, and it's basically a free flash. Uh, Schlumpf jumping in there from the side with the elastic slingshot, not going to land on anything, and will pull himself back to his own jungle. Yeah, so uh, you will just have to cut me off if I'm talking when there's play-by-play -play, uh, going on. It's one of those unfortunate side effects. Uh, but yeah, Zach, not able to get that to, to happen. Vi, meanwhile, not 
really, you know, she's doing all right right now. Got that one kill going on for her. And probably just going to look to go back. And if I had to guess, she's going to look, if she possibly can, for at least Boots 1 and probably Mobility Boots. Because if she can afford them now, that will be so influential in this map. There are so many lanes right now that she could very easily be ganking. Yeah, but, but that kill at bot is really set Spontex back. Not only is he a level behind Mozilla right now on the Aatrox, but Aatrox 34 CS to Cassidy's 15. Schlump was looking like he may try something here, but with the lane pushed up, he's not going to be able to gank for the foreseeable future. So again, we'll be pulling himself back. Top lane has been pretty much a farming frenzy. Jace 38 with Ari on 33. But remember, Ari was one of the recipients of those first two kills and got an assist out of it. So it's looking pretty good overall on gold. Vi just hanging around mid here. So Agent really trying to make plays, trying to stamp his authority early on in this game. But again, realizing it's a fairly difficult lane to gank because Thresh can just flay you backwards, get a death sentence and get Varus out of dodge. But actually Vice coming around from the side on top of a ward, charging up the Vault Breaker is going to be coming around. But again, not going to land anything. It just seems a little bit odd to be putting this much focus on the mid lane here because Nardius is not really being shut down here. Indeed, he's out farming his opponent and all they need to do is get that farm in order to essentially win out. Plus, there's a Jace in that top lane with only one oh. escape ability. Uh, bot lane spot, sorry to jump in here, but Massacre has been popped off and the Ignite as well. Spontex is very largely flashing in to secure the kill. And that dominance of bot lane just carries on. Meanwhile, actually in the mid lane as well, Agent has been caught out of position, still stood on top of that same ward. Nice dark passage bringing into the fray, Varus. They're going to pick up one there, but their eyes set on Nardius, who is forced to flash through that wall back towards his own tower. So overall, a 1-1 one -one trade globally. So yeah, both the solo lanes, I guess now Spontex is so far behind that Arthrox is just free to do whatever he feels like anyway. Um, I, you know, he, he's not so worried about ganking that, but it does still strike me as odd that Jace is not being camped right now by Agent and that he's hanging around mid so much. I mean, I guess he's expecting counter ganks or to be able to counter gank Hefty Schlumpf, but he doesn't really have many tools to gank this lane either. There's just too many wards as compared to what you normally expect in that mid lane. That's very true, and that's how the dynamics do shift when you get the duo lanes in mid, because of course the supports are going to be bringing plenty of vision in their backpack to plant down. So Vi just getting caught out a couple times there. First time went in for a gank, just wasn't on the cards because they could see exactly where uh, he was actually coming from, Agent. And the second time, kind of predicting it would happen again, as Jace does go aggressive on Ari at the top, Bimbo firing back in with the Spirit Rush, actually turning this one back round, but with some ultis being popped down and some uh, some spells as well, actually, he's going back in again, pops down the Ignite and flashes away, picks up the kill. I did not see that one coming. I did not expect Bimbo to re-engage. Yeah, but well, right now I'm, <laughs> I'm still watching it going on, and indeed, yeah, very good game sense. He was using the last tick of that Spirit Rush on, like, the last instant that it was available to him which I think Jace thought it had already timed out. He used it to both damage and set up both his skill shots. And Ari has a really strong burst combo in terms of just getting that... Um, like, it's weird to say it, but like it's a burst combo that takes quite a long time. But it actually is really high damage, even for that length of time. Yeah, absolutely. Hefty Schlump coming in there this time, landing, and then let's bounce as well. Right place at the right time for Agent, though, turning this one back around. Hefty Schlump is very, very low, forcing off the Assault and Battery, knocking him into his Globalist there. Here comes the Sona Crescendo as well. They picked up one kill. Can they make it two? It looks like Zack could just about get back into his form, jumping away with the last six slingshot, but he will be finished off courtesy of Vi, taking it into a 7-1 lead for Reason Gaming. And this is a different RG that we saw yesterday, who got crushed off Asian Maze. Meanwhile, at top, actually, Spontex is looking to make amends for that poor performance at bot lane and does pick it up on Ari. Yeah, so that's actually very, very nice. Um, it's a very, very nice swap up actually, to put Spontex in that top lane, um, because both... Uh, Jace is going to deal better with Artrox and Cassidy is going to deal better with Cassidy. But that was the persistence of Agents camping that mid lane, finally paying off. He was aware that Zack had more ganking potential than him, but in that counter gank situation, he's already ahead and he's really, really strong. Indeed, this is kind of peak time for Vi in terms of ganking power. 
Yeah, definitely. And you've, you've got to give mad props as well, Agent, for realizing that and using her advantages and exploiting the chinks in the armor right now um, from Croissant Crusaders because they are going to start to scale pretty nice. Cassidy is going to get dangerous. Even though Spontex has not had a great beginning, you can bet your bottom dollar that he's going to finish strong here. So they need to make sure they, they use the advantages they have and they try and snowball this one out of control. That being said, they do have quite a bit of late game presence and damage in their side of the court as well with Nardius. Ari's going to be doing pretty nice damage. Aatrox we've seen time and time again absolutely crush faces. And where a lot of Aatroxes in the jungle will build tanky with it being a top Aatrox with Mozilla could very well be going full damage. We can see Blade of the Ruined King is being built up right now from Mozilla. Yeah, it tends to be stuff like that Blade of the Ruined King. If you're going to go for a tanky item, something like a Spirit Visage can work really, really well. Because Artrox does actually scale off cooldown reduction pretty effectively. It means you can get more of his abilities out, which means you can get your blood well built up a little bit faster. Plus, Spirit Visage is an incredibly efficient item right now. Plus, the healing oh. passive is incredibly good. They are going to be diving in this, but underneath the tower, they've picked up one kill. They're looking for two. They will get it. As Zach did not have his ultimate, his passive, I should say, off cooldown with a cell division. And now Six is trying his best to escape. There are four angry players chasing him down. He's popped the flash to get through the wall, running back from the red buff right now. Mozilla is going to have a lot of maneuverability with that dark flight coming up. In fact, it is already off cooldown. So the question is, can he finalize this kill? Jumping in again, slowing down as well with the blade of tournament torment. And now here comes the cavalry in the form of Odomne. It has popped off the passive, so the blood well is off cooldown right now. On cooldown, I should say. But Nardius comes in from the side. Very big damage out the gates from Jace, who's now looking to turn this one back round again. This is such a staggered team fight, with both teams just smashing each other above the heads and then running away, hit and run style. And now Odonna's going really deep, running into the crescendo. The cell, the blood well is actually on cooldown, so Mozilla has to be super careful. Actually going in with the Dark Flight, he still has his flash off cooldown. They pick up the kill on Thresh, and now the long-range barrage comes in from Odonis. So this has been a really strange <laughs> engage, but seemingly lasting forever. Well, it was a fight that went all the way from the mid tower up to that top so of the mid tower inner tower of one team to the up outer tower <laughs> on top lane and the the thresh just just bugged out on my screen, which is a little bit interesting. Um, but um, up to that uh, top lane, so you know, really, really protracted engagement. But that's because both of these teams are so mobile. Characters like Vi, characters like Ari, and indeed Zach and uh, Cassidy, their counterparts, they even had time to go back and then jump back into the fight after having used all their mobility school, uh, skills to get back there. Yeah, absolutely. So they went for the, I mean, it all started with that dive on mid lane on the second tier tower and it transitioned with them chasing Thresh all the way up to the top and then just this to and fro hit and run kind of uh, engage that just seems to prolong forever. But at the end of the day, that is 10 to 4 in terms of kills and a 3.8k gold advantage falling into the hands of Reason Gaming. Drake has not been attempted yet, although it's being pinged up from both sides. And as you can see, they are starting to move their way down towards this Drake area. So could very well be on the cards right now. Three players occupying mid, Spontex, Prothana and Six, looking to push the mid lane, which is still pretty healthy overall. And that, that is going to cause Kazmic and Bimbo just to clear up this creep wave. Cassidy going back to top, so maybe the Drake fight not quite on the cards just yet, Spud. I'm actually a little bit surprised to see that nobody is running teleport this game, because right now that would be such a powerful tool. And I don't really feel like Cassidy needed that ignite in the lane, or, well, I mean, maybe he thought he would need it, but he kind of got dumped on anyway. Uh, so maybe that would have actually helped alleviate that. We'll see if they choose to do something like that in the future, but uh, it looks like the Cassidy is going to be doing the split pushing duties this game, and that will really be quite difficult actually for Reason to come in to deal with. If they can chase him down with Vi, perhaps, if they can catch him out, that would be good, but it's Cassidy. If you don't, like, if he doesn't really mess up. Oh. You know, There's okay. actually an engage here, but on the Drake, actually had RG trying that one off, and then here comes Hefty Shlump from the side, forced to flash away, very, very low on his hit points, Prothana is going to go down from the Ignite, here comes Bimbo from the side, they claim the second kill as well, Hefty Shlump is so, so low, does have the Cell Division, 
back off cooldown, so would just be put into his T1000 state. But either way, they are going to chase off this Dragon attempt with a 2 for 0 trade at the end, going into the hands of Reason Gaming. So even when they do go slightly ahead, Spud, they're just pushing the envelope even further in their favor. Yeah, Reason Gaming have got momentum, <clears throat> and they are really, really pushing right now. They can get another couple of towers. They're going to start to hit those gold advantages where with that Artrox, they can just dive in, you know, almost equal situations. And that is when it starts to get really scary if you're playing against them. Quaison Crusaders seem to have not really got the same... Looking for the word here, but I'm going to just use my generic choice of word here. Gumption. They don't seem to have that same um, ability to control the flow of the game as we saw them do in the first round. Yes, as you were speaking there, Drake did go down uh, to the side of Reason Gaming, so they are just escalating further ahead. Now stands at 6.3k gold in their advantage. They are two objectives up, obviously counting the Drake and the one tower. So it has came back to a bit of a standstill, so I feel we're a bit safe now, Spud, to, to theory craft a tiny bit on what you can see happening. In fact, that being said, of course, the cast of the curse of the commentator comes in as Pontex gets jumped upon by Mozilla. We'll just riff walk away, however, and be just fine. But going into this game right now, as it stands, Spud, obviously Reason Gaming undoubtedly are ahead. They are in the driver's seat. What do Quasson Crusaders have to do to bring this game back in towards the even stage or even in their side in their favour? I think all they need to do is pretty much what they are doing at the moment. They just need to be constantly shoving these lanes and ensuring that they don't get caught out in so doing. So a lot of the work is going to fall on Six, and he's going to have to play very self-sacrificially this game. If he is, you know, to get an early oracles to get a lot of pink wards and a lot of green wards, as well as utilizing his sightstone and keep control of the map as much as possible, then his team have a very strong ability to just split push. With the Cassidy mobility, with the Zac mobility, with the Varus wave clear and the Jace wave clear, they can just push and they can always keep Reason Gaming forced to, to react to them. However, if they lose that control of the vision, then they're going to start to have real problems and if they get caught out, that is also going to cause some problems. Yeah, speaking of caught out, that is going to be a chain of corruptions into the box as well. Now let's bounce from Zach chasing the back. Crescendo is used beautifully, catching all three players. Six Prothana and Hefty Schlumpf all stunned, all locked down, will not be able to give chase. But at the end of the day, when it's all said and done, yes, some summoners were burnt, yes, some ultis were burnt, but they got that all-important bottom tower. So they now move themselves in a 3-0 uh, lead in terms of towers and they now have their eyes set on this mid lane yeah it's not good right now for class of crusaders much as you mentioned they are starting to just lose towers across the board artrox is such a strong duelist right now Cassidin can't really seem to deal with him jace can't really seem to deal with them and that's causing them a lot of problems i hope i wasn't talking when something was happening uh just two kills went down there in mid <laughs> it all happened off the charm it's just i'm very uh, conscience of not constantly jumping in over the top of you even though there is nothing you can do about it it's just a really awkward kind of situation to be in we'll try our best to rectify that for game number two ladies and gents unfortunately if you have just joined us spectator mode was turned off by the players for some unknown reason maybe they just forgot but regardless this is game number one out of potential three that is just about a 10k gold lead coming in the hands of Reason Gaming. They picked up that second tier tower in mid as well. So that's a lot of global uh, presence, map presence in their side as well. They can pretty much just go into the opposition jungle now whenever they so choose and steal away those buffs. But now pinging on towards their own buffs. So I don't think anything is going to happen just yet, Spud. Yeah, they have to be a little bit careful not to let anyone get solo caught out. But so long as they're not too aggressive... So long as they don't let um, Crasson Crusaders stall this out, and they honestly don't have much reason to, you know, they've got good tools to force all kinds of objectives. Reason Gaming should have this. I don't want to. I don't want to jinx it because these kinds of things do get turned around on a knife edge. But Reason Gaming definitely, definitely a long way ahead right now. 
Yeah, it, it is hard to see how they're going to let this one slip through their fingers because pretty much across the board, everybody is looking healthy. Everybody is looking buff. 3 and 0 Vayne. Interestingly enough, go not going for Blade of the Ruined King first. That is something you see the vast majority of Vayne players opting for. Instead, the Bloodthirster into Zeal and Pickaxe. So, interesting pickups here. Definitely good still for Vayne. I'm not denying that even for a second. But then you've got to look across the board. 4 and 1 Ari, 3 and 1 Aatrox. And also Vi is chiming in with the kill. So just across the board, everywhere, everybody's looking very strong. Speaking of Vi, went really ballsy there. I thought for a second they're going to try and tower dive. This one actually could backfire. Hefty Slump jumping in. That's a beautiful lads bounce as well. But they need to be careful because Aatrox from the side is doing havoc right now. Jumping back in with the Dark Flight. Prothana in the front lines. Not the best positioning from the AD carry. Who will be punished with his life. Make that a double kill actually. As Thresh will go down. Triple kill coming in. And the quadra kill for their team. As just Spontex running away after seeing the entirety of his lineup crushed in front of his eyes. And that all came from a counter-engage there, Spud. You know, Schlumpf went in very ham with the Let's Bounce, and suddenly after that, it was all Reason Gaming crushing face. Yeah, and I couldn't really catch, you know, uh, exactly what happened at the start. I believe the camera was pointed in a different direction, but uh, that was one of the powers of the Guardian Angel ultimate, uh, ultimate passive there from Mozilla. He kind of just stood around and you know everyone looked at him as if he was going to do something aggressive but didn't end up doing so uh, and i do believe that was a surrender vote that's come in there so first game in this best of three going to reason gaming in quite convincing fashion matters Definitely. Uh, that's a very apt way of saying it. Uh, Reason Gaming, they took the advantage, they got the first two kills right in that level one engage, and from there they snowballed it. It's pretty much that simple. It's always nice when Ari is the recipient of one of those first two kills and managed to snowball, but then you have to give massive kudos and props to Agent, because he recognized that Cassidant is vulnerable when his flash is down pre-level 6. The Rift Walk gives him so much more confidence in lane, gives him so much more confidence in engaging and escaping that to really sit on him hard at the bot lane before level 6 without a flash is pretty much guaranteed kills, or at the very least it's guaranteed to completely negate any of his presence after level 6 up until maybe 11. That's exactly what they did. They got the kill and they snowballed it. Just really well played. Yeah, they just stomped on him, stomped on him some more and then never let him stand up. But anyway, we will be going into a very quick break now while we get the next lobby up and we make sure spectator mode is enabled this time so that hopefully I will be uh, not massively behind everybody else. But regardless, quick break, so we'll see you after this.